Hey all, and you welcome to my vlog! My name is Erin and this is the top 10 best tropes in historical romance. Everything on this list is just my personal opinion. If you don't like these ones, that's cool. This is all subjective and just for fun. Number one, meeting at the ball. The magic, the mystery, the utter extravagance. Give it to me! There's just something about people putting on these elaborate gowns, everything lit by candlelight while they drink and dance the night away. I love it. The leads will see one another from across the room. The whole world will freeze when they lock eyes and they will know that they are destined to be together. Even if the couple already knows one another, this still works so well for me. They get to dance together, hold one another close, compliment each other on their impeccable outfits, and if they're lucky, they'll get to steal away to some darkened halls or some moonlit gardens. Number two, ladies with careers. There are a lot of vicar's daughters and nobility floating around historical romance, so I get inordinately excited when the women have actual careers. I think sometimes we forget that women could do other things besides get married and have babies. They may have been a little less common, but they still existed. Give me the seamstresses, the lace makers, the nurses, the physicians. The options are there, and if you let them branch out into more traditionally male roles, then the options are pretty much endless. There are tons of things that women could do or were forced to do out of necessity, and I loves me some competent ladies. Let the women be educated. Let them be interested in a wide variety of subjects. If they don't have access to traditional education, then give them some option to explore the things that they're interested in. Number three, marriage of convenience. This one is like my ultimate catnip along with like fake dating and fake married. Everything about it floats my boat. While the reason that our leads are brought together might not be because of love, they're going to grow into it. They're gonna move beyond that and develop a mutual respect and support for one another. And I love it. This also applies to the arranged marriage trope because that is also extremely prevalent and kind of the same thing ends up happening. As long as both characters are decent people, I am fully on board with characters being shoved together so that they can explore their growing love. I love this trope so much that I literally wrote an entire book around it. My upcoming contemporary romance novel, Heart and Soul, has the basis of the marriage of convenience, and it makes me so freaking happy every time I work on it. I know it's contemporary and not historical, but just roll with me on this. Number four, scandals and forbidden love. Oh no, the Duke has fallen for the commoner. What scandal? The most common in this subgenre, I believe, is class differences, but you can play with this in all sorts of situations, whether it's religious differences, family feuds, and even in a lot of cases, queer romance would qualify as forbidden love. I especially enjoy the family feud version, where the couple basically forces the families to reconcile so that they can be together. Number five, love versus duty. I adore when characters are thrown into anguish when they have to choose between their true love and their duty to their family, or their country, or their monarch, or whatever. They need it. Although we the reader know that this is going to work out, the characters have no idea and have to suffer through trying to reconcile the fact that they will never get to be with their loved one because duty is pulling them in another direction. Sometimes the character is able to have both and sometimes choosing love over duty kicks off a whole mess of plot points. Sure, they're together now, but they've triggered a war. Number six, the eccentric slash wealthy older relative who is 110% on board with the MC getting laid. This character is usually an aunt or an aunt figure that the MC goes to stay with. Free from the restrictions of home and under the guidance of this character, the main character finally gets to blossom and find love. Typically, at least for me, these characters are the absolute scene stealers anytime they show up. Everyone, especially shy characters, need a cheerleader in their corner to push them past their comfort zone so that they can go after what they truly want. Number seven. The focus on fashion. I don't know if you know this, but we had some pretty swaggy outfits going on during the old timey eras. I love the complex garments, the social decorum, the jewelry, the hairstyles, everything about it floats my boat. If you've got wealthy characters, you can explore a wide variety of this super fancy clothing. If you've got more everyday characters, I am still going to be super interested in that because I'm a giant history nerd, so give it to me. Number eight, the matchmaker. I love when the person matching up prospective partners 
sees these two characters who might never take a second glance at one another and knows that they are perfect for each other. It might take those characters a little while to realize that perfection, but I cannot get over it when the matchmaker sees them and is just like, ah yes, this is exactly who you need. Even if they start off not totally understanding their compatibility, they can grow and learn and adapt to one another to create a new type of harmony. Number nine, love letters. Poetic language that always accompanies old timey love letters always gets me. If you don't have email or texts or phone calls or telegrams, then you can always fall back on the classic, the love letter. Maybe it's so salacious that it needs to be burned after reading. Or maybe it's the kind of sweet that you wrap up in a ribbon and hide away for those long years after you've reconciled yourself to marrying someone you don't love. Of course, this is romance, so the characters probably wouldn't actually go through with marrying that person they don't love, but the characters don't know that. We do, and I love it. Number 10, historical cameos. You can have so much fun with this one. Who doesn't love the random appearance of famous writers, rulers, or other historical figures? Regency romance is a huge facet of historical romance, and it's fun to have characters like Jane Austen and Mary Shelley popping up once in a while. I don't know why I get so excited about this, but I do. Now that we're done with the list, I have a very exciting announcement. I'm announcing that I am recruiting for the street team for my upcoming contemporary romance novel, Heart and Soul. If you're not familiar with what a street team is, they're basically the hype squad or cheerleaders of a book. My novel is a contemporary romance set in Seoul, South Korea, and it follows the love story of Tessa and Eunggi. Tessa is a writer and her book has been optioned for a drama. Eunggi is an idol who is pursuing acting in said drama. The fun part is that Eunggi is Tessa's K-pop bias, which is the absolute favorite in a group. The media gets a hold of what appears to be some compromising pictures, and his company suggests a marriage of convenience to temper the worst of the potential backlash. It's got moderate spice levels and it features a ton of LGBTQ plus characters and is going to be kicking off the rest of the series that will follow each of the men in the music group. If you're interested in being part of my street team, I will put a link below to a Google form that you can fill out to apply. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. All of my social media links will be in the description below. Both of my books, Olympian Confessions, Hades and Persephone and Olympian Confessions, Hera are available in ebook and paperback. And I'll see you all next week with another video. Bye. It goes, what you doing? <laughs> Just carry him in his little tunnel hammock. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's so cute. Pass it in front of the camera. This is why Iggy has to go away. He's in his tunnel and having so many feelings. <laughs>